Hey there, and welcome back to the very final episode of South Park The Stick of Truth. My name is Pete, and today we complete not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven achievements, which will then complete the total of all 50 available achievements in the game. With no more main or side quests to distract us, that shouldn't take all that long, so let's not waste any more time and get going. As we leave the house here, the first thing that we want to do is to set Kenny as our buddy here, as he is needed for one of the achievements that we're going to unlock, and he will also play a role in another. Our first stop of the episode will then be the Elven Kingdom. As you know, both Cooper Keep and the Elven Kingdom have a shop available to us, and while we have already bought everything we need in Cooper Keep, there are still a few interesting items available in the Elven Kingdom. We elves craft the finest shit in the land. However, with only $13 in our pocket, we won't be able to buy all that much, and so it is now time to make a bit of money and also unlock the first achievement in the process. We will now sell all of our junk items, and once we have sold 300 of those, we will unlock the Junk Peddler achievement. Now, the reason I saved all of these junk items up until this point is another achievement, because to unlock the For the Hoarder achievement, you cannot sell anything for the entire game. The game, however, is officially marked as completed after defeating Kenny, and we did that in the last episode, which you should check out by the way if you haven't already, and so we can now safely sell everything we don't need anymore. Alright, here we are, our funds are up to $372, and we sold way more than 300 junk items, so here's achievement number 1 of 7. We are not done with the selling though, up next we're going to get rid of all of our consumables. Now, there will be a bit of fighting still to come in this episode, but the enemies will mostly be pretty weak, and having reached the level cap at level 15, we don't really need to use any potions to stay alive. Alright, we now have just over $500 available to us, and that is more than enough to clear out the shop here. First of all, we're going to buy all 7 weapons that are being sold here, and that alone already costs us a bit over $110, but we're not done yet, we're also going to buy all 9 equipment pieces, which will add 3 more complete outfits to our inventory. Now, if you're strictly going for achievements, you don't necessarily need to buy the weapon strap-ons and equipment patches, but I like to be as thorough as possible, and so we're going to spend an additional $30 here. However, once again, the equipment-related achievements in the game only count weapons and outfits. And now that we're done with this shop, we are immediately going to hit up the next one, which will be inside of the girl's secret base on the playground, and the fastest way to get there is to fast travel over to the small park next to the photo dojo. From here we can then walk over to the right and meet the girls inside of the park restrooms. Wanna do a little shopping? Now we have roughly $250 available and we need about $230 to clear out the shop, so if you don't have enough at this point, feel free to sell a few more things, or get a hold of more money in a different way. I explain a fairly easy strategy in episode 17 of this walkthrough. Once again, depending on how much of a completionist you are, you definitely want to buy the weapons and equipment, and then you can decide whether or not you want to spend the additional $10 on the equipment patch here. Now we're taking a small break from the shopping spree and focus on an achievement that I actually should have unlocked in the last episode, and the achievement I am talking about is the one for befriending all of South Park. However, over the course of this playthrough, I unfortunately missed or rather forgot about three people. The first two are Kenny's sister and mother, which we can both find inside of their house. Oh hey, you're the new kid. My sister, the princess, texted me about you. She thinks you're cute. Sorry to hear about the renters. Usually they're real fun and energetic. Now, the normal way to get those two is to make a quick stop after defeating the meth tweakers next door, but for some reason it seems like I forgot about that. There is also a bit of loot to be found inside, most of it inside of Kenny's room, but it's mostly junk and small amounts of cash, so no unique items or equipment. Back outside, we are immediately going to fast travel again, this time over to the post office, where we can get a friend request from the third and final missing person. The zombies came for the tacos, that's my theory. Oh hey, I was just thinking about you and all the social status you gained. It's so weird that we aren't friends yet. I know, right? Befriending Lola here unlocks the more popular than John Lennon achievement, which you get for becoming friends with all 120 available people in South Park. Very important to note is that for this achievement to unlock, you also need to befriend Clyde at the very beginning of the game. If you miss out on that, the achievement cannot be completed. 
Lola here, by the way, is one of those kids who only befriends us if we have a certain amount of friends already. I think the amount needed to get a request from her is 40. Back outside, we fast travel once more, this time over to South Park Elementary, but our destination is a different one. Hey, you're that popular kid. To the right of the school, we have the community center. This is where the PTA meeting took place, and the key figures from that meeting are still present, including Mr. Mackey, who has his own little shop. All purchases go to support the PTA, okay? Now, financially, we are sadly once again down to a point where we can't really do much, so we will start off by selling all the stuff listed on the flare here. That includes wigs, glasses, and beards. Selling all of those gets us up to roughly $80, but we still need a bit more, roughly $320 to be exact. And at this point, we unfortunately have no other choice but to sell some weapons. Now, don't worry, to unlock the related achievements, you don't need to own all the weapons or outfits at the same time. Simply having them in your inventory at one point in the game is enough. And that is why we can safely sell a few things here, until we have a bit over $330. We will then buy the Page of Unfinished Homework weapon strap-on. The shield sticker here is available as well, but we already have that one and cannot buy it a second time. We are also quickly buying both equipment patches here, and then we'll be on our way. Once again, if you are strictly going for the achievements and do not care about the weapon and equipment patches, then you can completely skip this section. If you refer a friend, Jimbo will waive the waiting period for handguns. And speaking of Jimbo, that is actually where we are heading next. His shop is the last one here in South Park that we need to visit. Once again, a quick fast travel will get us over to the Tower of Peace, and from there it's only a few meters walking over to the left until we arrive at Jimbo's gun store. What can I do for you, new kid? Now Jimbo has four weapons to sale, including the Sweet Katana, arguably the best melee weapon in the game, and buying all of them will cost us a hefty $151. Jimbo also has three weapon strap-ons and one equipment patch for sale, and a further $45 will transfer those over into our inventory as well. This leaves us now with roughly $120, and that is more than enough for what comes next. From Jimbo's store, we continue down to the left until we meet the rats. Those can be dispersed with a dragon shout, and that clears the path inside of the Lost Forest. Before we enter though, we quickly want to activate Gnome Form, and having the cup of spell fart ready to use is also a good idea. Inside of the forest, we then head north towards Canada, but on our way, we hope to run into some wolves. Here they are, attacking immediately, but retreating into the next area, we find another group. And here, while in gnome form, we want to use Cup of Spell on one of them, and that unlocks the Dog Whistle achievement. Afterwards, we can also engage in combat and immediately start working on the next achievement. Now, the wolves attack Kenny here, which is very fortunate, and we are not going to do anything about that. There is an achievement in the game for having Kenny die 10 times in battle, and this right here marks number 1. Taking out the wolves only with the new kid is then not all that difficult. The Sling of David already does nice amounts of damage, and the wolves' counterattacks are pretty weak, so that the second slingshot finishes them off. After the battle, Kenny rejoins us, and we can loot the bodies and continue to head north. Now, there is once again a simple reason why I'm tackling this achievement now that the game is over, and that is the No Child Left Behind achievement that we unlocked in the previous episode. That achievement unlocks if you finish the game without a body ever being knocked out at the end of combat, so the fight we just had, for example, would void that achievement. Now, it is still possible to have your companions go down and revive them. What counts for the achievement is their state at the end of the fight. Now, Kenny automatically revives himself after two turns, but waiting for that to happen ten times would unnecessarily drag out the fights, so I postponed the achievement for this episode where we no longer have to worry about anything. Welcome to the Bank of Canada! Oh American money! The current exchange rate is 1.2 pounds of an hour. Now in Canada, we will first visit the money exchange in Ottawa, where we exchange all of our American dollars into Canadian. This gives us a total of about 150 Canadian dollars, however, we will only need just over 130. I see you have dire AIDS. I can heal it for 5 Canadian dollars. You are now cured of dire AIDS. You still have AIDS, but it is no longer dire. It's like Magic Johnson AIDS. In the hospital, we quickly got ourselves cured from dire aids for a measly $5, since we no longer need to have it for the outpatient achievement. And now begins the fighting. What we'll do for the next few minutes is to walk around the map here and engage in combat with the Canadian wildlife. Our very straightforward goal in each and every one of those fights is to have Kenny die. 
Luckily though, his abilities help immensely in that regard, as simply failing to execute them correctly will already lead to his demise. Both his fairy friends and unicorn stampede abilities will still deal nice amounts of damage even if they fail, and so Kenny's death still helps us to win the fight. Two down, eight more to go, I would say let's speed things up a bit, I don't think I need to bore you with ten fights that play out more or less the same. The wolves here go down in quick fashion, just like the bears before them, and that brings Kenny's death counter up to three. And the snakes north of Winnipeg also don't pose a serious challenge, and eventually the bleeding damage from Kenny's fairy friend's ability kills them off. So that is now four kills and we'll quickly slow things back down, because we'll quickly interrupt the safari here for a stop in Banff. And our destination, you guessed it right, the local shop. Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? From the shopkeeper here we can buy the three pieces for the bishop outfit, and he also has two equipment patches for sale. Once we have everything, we can take a quick look at the equipment collection, and we can see here that we already own 102 of 103 pieces of equipment. A bit further down, we can also see that the last missing piece is in fact a weapon, and that means we have just collected all available clothing items in the game, we just bought the last remaining outfit, and that unlocks the Clothes Whore achievement. That marks achievement number 4 of 7 for this episode, and therefore leaves us with only 3 more to go. And as we head back into the wild, we immediately have a chance to get the next one, because we are now facing a group of 3 enemies. And there is another achievement in the game for defeating three enemies while your buddy is knocked out. So we want to make sure not to damage them too much with the new kit here, because for the achievement to unlock, all three of them need to be alive by the time that Kenny goes down. That happens quickly with another failed furry friends ability, and we now only have to survive the three counterattacks. The bleeding damage from furry friends however does an excellent job and makes the life a lot easier here. Two of the three enemies go down after their attacks, and we can take care of the last one with a simple sling of David. And now, as the last enemy is defeated, we unlock the Avenger achievement. At the same time, we now also have reached half time in terms of Kenny's deaths, we had him die five times, and we need five more. Problem is, all animals on the map are defeated, but we can quickly solve that by heading into the cave here. Heading inside not only gives you a checkpoint and therefore a chance to save the game, but heading back out also respawns all the animals. And so as we now enter combat once more, let's also speed things up again. The next five minutes are pretty straightforward and won't be all that exciting. The two dire bears here suffer the same fate as before, the sling of David drops them down to low health, and the fairy friends not only kill Kenny for the sixth time, but also wrap up the fight. Same story with the dire wolves further north, this fight is once again more or less an exact copy of the previous one. We start with the Sling of David and end with the furry friends. We're up to 7 and for number 8 we fight two snakes again, and here starting off with the Sling of David would be fatal, because the attack is simply too strong and would immediately kill them both. So this fight takes slightly longer, allowing the snakes to get one round of attacks in themselves, but then the bleeding damage quickly kills them. For death number 9 we then once again fight the group of three snakes in the northwest, and here we can also for the first time use the unicorn stampede. So Kenny has now died 9 times in combat, and once again we have no more enemies to fight. So we will make the trip to the cave once more, to respawn Canada's wildlife one last time. And this right here is now the final fight of the playthrough, and for the third straight time the two dire bears here do not stand a chance. Kenny's death at the hands of his fairy friends then marks number 10, and with that we unlock the You Bastards achievement. This now leaves only one single achievement left to complete, and for that we quickly need to head over to Vancouver. 
And here we want to also check out the shop, the last one in the game that we haven't completely cleared out. People come from far and wide to buy our 2010 Winter Olympics merchandise. Welcome to the shop. Can I interest you in my wares? We can then buy the last weapon for our collection, and we can also purchase the final weapon strap on. And once again, we will now have a look at our equipment, and after purchasing that last item, we now not only have all costumes, but also all weapons available in the game, and that unlocks achievement number 50, the last and final one of this playthrough, the full arsenal achievement. Now, if we quickly head into our inventory and have a look at the weapon strap-ons, then we can see that the collection here is complete as well, with 56 different strap-ons. Now, for the armor patches, things look a bit differently. If we scroll down to the end of the list here, we can see that there are 4 open spots still left, but I am fairly certain that there are no more armor patches left in the game. We have cleared out every shop, we have searched every container, I have read multiple lists and guides online, and as far as I can say, our collection here is complete as well. Now, if you have noticed a point in the game where we might have missed something, then feel free to leave that down below in the comments, but at this point, I am moderately confident to call this playthrough completed. And so we wrap things up and say goodbye to South Park The Stick of Truth, not in South Park, but in Canada. I have to say I enjoyed this playthrough more than I thought I would. It is an excellent game in my opinion. The storyline and the characters might not be for everyone, but from a gameplay standpoint it's absolutely solid, and for a completionist like me, it's a great game from start to finish. So as usual, if you liked this episode, I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you want to rewatch an episode or maybe even the entire playthrough, then you can find the full playlist on the left, while the latest video on the channel will be featured on the right. And if you want to support the channel, help it grow and stay up to date on future playthroughs, then go ahead and feel free to subscribe. This has been Pete Complete's South Park The Stick of Truth, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.